All right, so my name is Cynthia Rudin, and I want to talk about why we shouldn't be using black box machine learning models for high stakes decisions, and we should be using interpretable models instead. I want to start with the question of whether a typographical error can lead to years of extra prison time, right? This should never happen, right? Typ typos making decisions, right? That's crazy, right? Who's making decisions, a judge or a typo? Is that fair, right? Well, well it happens all the time. And uh, this is an article about it. Um, this is an article about um, a person named Glenn Rodriguez who was denied parole because of a miscalculated compass score. And compass is a proprietary black box model that's used widely throughout the justice system. And yes, a, a, a typo made a decision here, not a parole board. And you might think this is like a one-off, like it would happen rarely, but that's not true. Um, we've been looking at criminal justice databases and it happens all the time. And not only that, this kind of thing happens in loan decisions and medical decisions and lots of other high stakes decisions too. And it's really difficult to figure out um, when it happens if the model making the predictions is a black box predictive model. Okay, so some definitions. A black box model is a formula that's either too complicated for any human to understand or it's proprietary. These models can be difficult to troubleshoot, um, tr difficult to troubleshoot the overall model for bias. It can be difficult to verify that an individual prediction is correct. And these models don't augment human decision makers. They just replace them because the human has to trust, decide whether to trust it um, without knowing what it's actually doing. An interpretable machine learning model, on the other hand, uh, obeys a domain-specific set of constraints so that humans can better understand it. And there's a spectrum between models that are um, kind of fully interpretable where they, that you know, you can understand how all the variables are kind of jointly related to each other, like a simple scoring system or something, uh, to models that are loosely constrained where, for instance, the model might increase as one variable, or that the predictions might increase as one variable increases. And so uh, why do you need interpretable models? Um, you need them for high stakes decisions or troubleshooting. So cases where, you know, it would be really bad if, if the model went wrong because a lot of times artificial intelligence models do, do go wrong. They, they really go wrong. Okay, so what happens when we use a black box? Um, well, here's a case where uh, it's, it's an article about an air pollution model used by Google that was wrong during wildfire season and it told people it was safe to go outside when it wasn't. Uh, it told people it was, it was safe to go outside when there was a layer of ash on the cars and we don't know what went wrong with their model. Uh, here's another example where some researchers found racial bias in a hospital algorithm and the company that designed the predictive model didn't notice. Now, I've given you just a few things that have gone wrong with using black box machine learning models, but there's a tremendous amount more that could go wrong and probably many things have gone wrong that were hidden so I don't know about them. And now people are starting to use machine learning for medical decisions, for loan decisions, self-driving cars, and all matter of other things that you really don't want to go wrong. Now, I want to get back to Compass here. Um, do we really need black box models? Right? Are, are they more accurate? Well, just around the time that this article came out, a data set from Florida came out as well, with had, which had Compass scores. So we could actually test how accurate Compass was. So we compared Compass to our latest machine learning method in the lab, which was called Corals. And Corals produces very tiny logical, like if-then rule type models. Um, so let me show you the, the full model that Corals produced. Um, so again, this is a machine learning model that I'm going to put on the slide here. Um, so here, here's the model. It says that if, if the person is, is 19 to 20 years old and male, predict arrest within two years of their compass score calculation. So again, compass is predicting arrest um, so, um, from, from a certain time point. So here we're saying, you know, if they're young and male, predict arrest within two years of that compass score calculation. Also, if they're between ages 21 and 22 and they have two to three priors, um, prior offenses, predict arrest. Otherwise, if they have more than three priors, predict arrest. Otherwise, predict no, no arrest. Okay, so it's, it's a really tiny little model. Um, I'm not saying we should use this model in criminal justice, but what the, the, the surprising thing is that this model um, turned out to be as equally accurate to Compass. So what I'm showing you are different subsets of the data in different colors, and you can see that Compass and Corals are about equally accurate. And so we thought, oh, that's interesting. Well, why don't we throw, out, throw in the whole arsenal of machine learning methods at this problem and see if we can get any more accuracy? And it turns out that we really couldn't. They all perform the same. 
And some of these are like black box models, like boosted decision trees, which are really complicated and wouldn't fit on a PowerPoint slide. Um, and then on the other hand is Corals, whose whole model is like in the, in the bottom of the slide. So now there was this huge debate about algorithmic fairness of Compass, but the truth is that I don't see why we're still using Compass at all. So anyway, um, perhaps we're using complicated models or proprietary models wh when we don't need them. Um, in particular for re-arrest prediction and criminal justice, uh, it doesn't seem that you're getting any benefit from a black box model and there's a lot of evidence for that. Um, but it seems to be true that there's no real benefit from complicated models for lots of different problems. And I've listed a bunch here, all of which we were able to find uh, interpretable models that are equally as accurate as their black box counterparts. But it really depends on your data representation. So for instance, um, if you're working, there's, there's really two different types of machine learning problems. There's problems with tabular data that look kind of like that, which is variables and values, and all the variables are meaningful. Um, and then there's sort of raw data, which is like images and sound waves and text. And these two types of data have very different, you work with them in different ways, you think about them in different ways. Um, the raw data doesn't naturally come with a good data representation, so you have to kind of create one. Uh, and so for raw data, as it turns out, um, neural networks is really the only technique that's working right now. It doesn't mean you can't create an interpretable model. It just means that you have to know what, you have to think about what interpretability means. So for instance, in computer vision, you might want visual explanations and a neural, an interpretable neural network can help get you those. Um, whereas with tabular data, uh, as I showed you for the compass um, example, with minor preprocessing, all the methods tend to have very similar performance. And so um, you can actually create very interpretable models if you know how to optimize them carefully, right? If you know how to construct these things, you can get an interpretable model that's just as accurate as the black box. Okay, so it kind of makes you wonder, like, you know, where are, where are the cases where black box models are more accurate? And so I'm going to pose two challenges, the first one being interpretable neural networks for computer vision. So uh, as I mentioned, you can still construct interpretable neural networks for computer vision. You can ask for visual explanations. So I'm going to show you an example from an algorithm we created called ProtoPNet. This algorithm is, uh, has been trained on a bird classification data set, and it's trying to explain to us why it classified this bird over here on the left as a clay-colored sparrow. Uh, and I don't know anything about birds, so <laughs> this is just kind of fun. Um, so the network says that it thinks that the head of the bird um, is, is similar to the head of another bird that, it is, that happens to be a prototypical clay-colored sparrow. And it says, well, I also think the belly of that bird looks like this belly of this prototyp this other prototypical clay-colored sparrow. And the wing pattern on the edge of the wing looks like this other bird's wing pattern. And it, it sort of makes these comparisons. And it says, because of these comparisons to these prototypes, that's why I think this is a clay-colored sparrow. And the network's learning all of this. It's learning what the prototypes are. It's learning how to, 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 to calculate distances and so on. This is all um, the network explaining to us how it's thinking about this problem. And the interesting thing is that ProtoPNet and a lot of the other interpretable machine learning methods for interpretable neural network methods they tend to have the same accuracy as, as the black box method. So there's really no indication that you have to sacrifice accuracy to gain interpretability for um, these, these benchmark data sets in computer vision. Okay, fine, so let's pose a second challenge. Let's work on some really hard benchmark data sets. So people post these data sets because they're hard, right? Like the bird watching data set. But I wanna switch to a different data set here, which is the data set from the FICO Explainable Machine Learning Challenge, where the goal was to sort of create a black box and explain it, right? And so, um, but we didn't do that. Uh, and so I, I wanna tell you a little bit about this data set. So it's a home equity line of credit data set. It gives you a whole bunch of different factors about each person's um, credit history. It's about 10,000 loan applicants and your job is to predict whether or not they're gonna default on their loan. Now, if you run a bunch of machine learning algorithms, black box methods, um, you'll get that the best accuracy is around 73%. Um, and the best black box area under the RSE curve is about 0.8. And these are the two most common metrics for performance of machine learning methods. Now, the winner of the challenge uh, was IBM, and they, they, their model asked 
people six questions, but they lost, um, they lost accuracy when doing it and they lost a lot of AUC. So their accuracy was down to 71.8, AUC was down to 0.62. Um, I'm going to show you the model that we, that we uh, sent in in our submission. Um, our submission is a two-layer additive risk model. It actually was a very traditional model. It, it took the different factors, divided them into 10 subscales, and created a little scoring system for each subscale, and then combined those 10 scoring systems in another scoring system. And um, that, that was it. That's all, that's all it did. Uh, anyway, so the accuracy of it was uh, just as high as the best black box accuracy and the AUC was just as good as the best black box AUC. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I can show you kind of what it's doing. Um, I'm zooming in here on the delinquency subscale in the middle and it involves four features, the percent of traits never delinquent, months since most recent delinquency, and, and so on. And I want to just show you kind of what, what it's computing here. So um, it's looking at, it's giving a certain number of points for each of these four factors. So the percent of trades never delinquent, uh, this, this guy whose credit we're rating, um, his, his percent was between 59 and 84, so he got like a point for that, whatever. So then you add up the points, you add like a bias to it, you send it through this interesting function kind of down at the bottom there, this little logistic function, and you get a risk associated with that. And you do that for all 10 subscales, and then the 10 subscales go into a final scale. It's just a very, very traditional model, though we trained it kind of more carefully. Um, and yeah, it, it, you know, it didn't lose any accuracy. So what, what I'm telling you is that in both of these cases, um, we haven't really found that any, any cases where black boxes are more accurate. And uh, so there's really no scientific evidence that there's an accuracy interpretability trade-off at all. Um, so it doesn't seem that you, that you really need to sacrifice predictive performance for interpretability as long as you're really good at optimization, right? As long as you can optimize for interpretability in addition to accuracy. So that's why I keep saying like we should really not use black box machine learning models for high stakes decisions and we should use interpretable models instead. Thank you.